Okay, so if you were following along in the other video and noticed that I didn't really go into detail on how to get your cutlass through the box, and you wanted to see that in detail, you have ended up here. The first thing you should take into account is how long the cutlass is. The longer the sword, the wider the box. Now if you don't have a drill press, you can make yourself a 45 degree incline like the one shown here. For those of you with a drill press, a simple adjustment can set your drill press tabletop to 45 degrees. I would not recommend drilling the holes without the homemade 45 degree stand or the drill press. Don't think you can eyeball this. Trust me, I've tried it. The symmetry of the sword with the ensign is very important. Do not join any of the pieces of your box together before your sword is placed through your box. The alignment of the sword can make or break a shadow box display. Take the cutlass and the ensign crossbar and place on the box. If you missed the making of the box up to this point, you need to go back and see the previous video. Once you have the ensign crossbar in place, align the sword with it evenly. Give yourself at least a half inch distance from the crossbar. Now take a pencil and mark both sides of the sword. Take your box back apart, keeping the two pieces that you marked. Take a small square and from the marks you made at the top of your piece, continue each one straight down. Do this for both pieces and place an arrow in the down direction of the angle. Now grab your cutlass and lay flat on the side piece, meaning the piece that will be the left side of the shadow box. Ensure your piece is oriented correctly. My two line design lets me know which is the bottom of the board. Before you make your marks, take a scrap piece of wood and ensure the cuff of the sword does not extend beyond the edge. If it does, you will not be able to mount this to a wall. Using a ruler, ensure the sword is the same distance all the way across the piece. Once you have it where you want it, make your marks. Remember, the cutlass needs to be on end. Do not lay flat when making your marks. Now take your top piece and the ruler. Align the cutlass the same distance from the edge using the measurements you used on the side piece and make your marks. Find yourself a drill bit that is about the same or a little thinner than the width of your cutlass. Align your board in the correct direction. This is why I placed a down arrow on the board earlier to help me align in the proper direction. When entering the wood, go very slowly at first. Mahogany and oak are hard and they will bend your drill bit in the direction of your angle if you try to enter the wood too fast. Drill out the top and bottom of your marks. Repeat this process to both pieces, remembering to keep your orientation. Now, clamp down your piece to a solid surface, and grabbing a coping saw, take the saw blade off the saw, and then feed it through the hole. Make sure you're using the top hole and in the proper angle. Continue to cut on one side of your line, and then repeat cutting on the other side. Once you have this process done, switch out your boards and continue with the other piece. With a small rectangle now cut into the board, you can see how the cutlass fits. Then, with a Dremel tool, shave out the areas that are a little tight. I like to use the Dremel because it allows me to make the center slightly wider where the cutlass is fattest. This is why I do not use a drill bit all the way across when drilling on the press. The Dremel allows me to really make the sword fit snug. Now, put your pieces back in order and feed your sword through the box. Check your alignment and ensure all went well with your cuts. Then take it to the table for staining. When putting in the crossbar, ensure it is even with the sword all the way across. This is why we waited to attach the crossbar. Okay, so that's all there is to it. For the rest of this video, I am going to show you how to make the cutlass really pop so you can see all the detail and the engravings on the blade. We are going to do that by placing a small black piece of felt behind the blade. Start by taking some of the leftover foam board you cut from the backing. The key here is to ensure that the blade sits in the center of your strip, so both sides left and right of the backing under the cutlass display the same amount of felt. 
I cut two pieces to give them extra width. So here, while gluing on the back plate, I also glued those two pieces together. So while that is drying, I wanted to take a moment to show you how lucky I got with the grain of this wood. After it was stained, it came out simply gorgeous. I'm sure this box is going to look like it was store bought, and only the owner will know it was done in someone's garage. After my piece is dry, I am going to use the same process that I use for all my felt jobs. I will glue it on with Elmer's white school glue. Here I grab a couple of clamps and two small pieces of scrap wood that will allow me to keep it all in place until the glue dries. Once that dries, I will glue and tuck my ends. Place some glue on the ends where the foam board still shows and press the ends down on a flat surface. Then simply fold them towards the back and clamp down. We will trim them up once they dry. When they are dry and ready for trimming, cut the majority of the excess but leave enough in case you need to fold it over. Remember that the sides of the shadow box will be hiding the extra felt and they will also help you to keep it snug. Normally, I would mount this piece right on the blue backboard, but as I say in every video, I make this up as I go along. So this time I have decided to place the piece up high directly under the cutlass. I will figure this out as I go. I will start by leaving the sword in the box and placing the piece up against it and simply gluing it to the ends and crossbar, and I will keep it in place with a couple of clamps. To give it even more support, I will glue in a piece of scrap wood directly below the felt strip. I also put some extra glue on the side that makes contact with the felt. I think with the black felt this close to the cutlass blade, it really makes it pop. So I think it came out great. And remember that the shape of your box really depends on the length of your cutlass. So if you plan on making a shadow box with a cutlass through it, don't agree to any specific size until you know the length of the sword. As always, thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button.